And there's another issue that I want to very briefly touch on uh, as well uh, today, Mr. President. And that deals with the whole issue of the USA Patriot Act and FISA and civil liberties in this country. Let me just make a few basic points. There is nobody in the Senate, there is nobody in the House who does not understand that there are terrorist groups out there who want to attack the United States of America and our allies who want to do us harm. And there's nobody in the Senate or in the House or I think in the United States of America who does not believe that as a nation we have got to do everything that we can to protect the people of our country from terrorist attacks. There is no debate on that. But what the debate is about is how do we protect the American people without undermining the Constitution of the United States of America or undermining the privacy rights of the American people? Mr. President, I think everybody does understand and should understand that modern technology in all of its forms from the iPhones to a dozen or a hundred different ways, that technology has greatly, greatly outstripped public policy in terms of protecting privacy rights. By and large, the privacy rights that we have on the books now were written years and years before the development of the technologies that we see right now. And it is absolutely imperative that as a nation, we begin a serious conversation, which includes some of the most knowledgeable people in this country, people who know about what technology can do today, what it can do tomorrow, people who are concerned about civil liberties and privacy rights, our law enforcement officials, our national security people and members of the United States Congress. And what that discussion should be about is pretty simple. How do we protect our country against terrorism at the same time as we protect our privacy rights and our constitutional freedoms? Mr. President, as we consider whether or not to reauthorize parts of the Patriot Act, we must take stock of where we are today. It is no secret that NSA collects vast sums of information and at one point or another has collected information on virtually every person in this country who uses a telephone. That is no great secret. Since June, 19, since June 2013, we have learned that the NSA collects phone call metadata, including the numbers of both parties, location, time, and duration. Text messages, email, chat, and internet browsing history. Smartphone app data, including Google Maps, which can pinpoint a person's location to within a few yards. Maps of people's social networks, bank and credit card transactions. And this, Mr. President, is just the tip of the iceberg. There is undoubtedly much more being done that we simply don't know anything about. Further, local governments and other agencies are also collecting information about the movements and the habits of law-abiding Americans. When you drive down the street, there are cameras that can take pictures of your license plate there are cameras on street corners, cameras in private buildings. The government knows where you are traveling and how long you are gone. Let's be clear. While today we are focusing appropriately on the role of the federal government in issues of civil liberties, we must also understand that it is not just the government that is collecting information on law-abiding Amer Americans. 
In fact, the private sector's collection of information is just as intrusive and equally dangerous. Mr. President, private companies, private corporations know a whole lot about what we do. Our every move can be tracked by a smartphone. Almost two-thirds of the American people, by the way, have smartphones. Mr. President, private companies can know what we read, what we are emailing about, what websites we visit. They know when you have purchased a ticket and know where that trip is taking you. They know whether you're going on a plane or a train or a bus or wherever. Mr. President, when we go to a grocery store, your discount card, your discount card gets scanned and the grocery store knows exactly what you are eating. Same thing at the pharmacy. They know what kind of medicine you are buying, enabling people to make judgments about your health. They know when you are pregnant based on your purchases. In the name of fitness, people are wearing watches and Fitbits that record your heart rate, your exercise patterns, and how much you sleep. In the wrong information, in the wrong hands, this information could prevent people from getting health insurance through their jobs and could even prevent them from getting hired in the first place. In other words, enormous, enormous, undreamed of amounts of information are out there and in the wrong hands. They could be a real danger to our country and to the lives of millions of innocent people. Mr. President, this is what the attack on privacy looks like. Someone can access your phone calls. They can access your credit card records. They can comb through your purchases. They can analyze your spending habits. They can access your emails and your contacts. They can track your movements. Pretty much anything and everything that we do these days can be tracked and recorded. Now, I hear many of my colleagues coming to the floor of the Senate, and they talk about America being a free country. Well, if somebody knows everything you are doing, maybe it is time to recognize that we are not quite so free as we think we are. And I know that the argument that I'm raising, people will say, well, trust, trust these large corporations, trust the government, they're honest people, and by and large, many of them are, I'm not suggesting otherwise. But in terms of government policy, let us not forget that 45 years ago, we had a president of the United States named Richard Nixon. And what Richard Nixon believed is that anything the president of the United States does by definition is legal. You could break into your opponent's political headquarters, not a problem, he's the president. You could spy on people, not a problem, he's the president. So I would ask my colleagues and the American people, and I do not suggest this for one second, that this is true of the Obama administration, but I do ask the American people to think what happens in the future if you have a president who really does believe that he or she is the law, that he or she can or should have access to the kinds of information that is out there. Think about the incredible power that administration has, the potential for blackmail, the political advantages that that administration has. And people say, well, it's a pretty crazy idea, never going to happen. Well, a lot of things have happened that we never thought could happen. So, Mr. President, it seems to me that now is the time for us as a nation, for us as elected officials, to have a very, very important conversation about how we balance our need, of which there is no debate, to protect the American people against terrorist attacks, while at the same time we respect the privacy rights and the constitutional rights of our people and how we maintain America 
as a free and open society. I got involved in this issue a number of years ago when I voted against the USA Patriot Act. And I remember some librarians in the state of Vermont came to me and they said, you know, as a result of Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act, law enforcement officials, the FBI, can come to a librarian and demand that that librarian provide information about the books that people are borrowing from a library. And of course, Section 215 goes a lot further than that. Mr. President, do we want to be a nation in which we are looking over our shoulders and worrying about the books that we are reading? Because somebody will say, oh, you're reading a book about Osama bin Laden. Clearly, you must be a terrorist. Is that really the kind of fear that we want to see established in this country. So I say to my colleagues, it is great to come to the floor and talk about freedom, but what freedom is about ultimately is the right of people to do what they want to do in a law-abiding way without harming other people. That's called freedom. And in my view, people have a right to make a telephone call today without that information being collected by the government. People have a right to go to the internet to send an email with the absolute assurance as law-abiding citizens <clears throat> that their visits to a website or the emails they send will not be tracked by the government. People have a right to go to a grocery store and purchase what you buy in a grocery store without knowing that somebody knows what you're buying. Mr. President, uh, I intend to shortly introduce legislation which will call for a comprehensive review of data collection by public and private entities and the impact that that data is having on the American people. I don't know if this is a progressive piece of legislation or a conservative piece of legislation, but I would hope that the have broad support across the political spectrum from people who actually do believe in a free society, that our young people should not be worried about the kinds of books they read or the websites that they visit. Mr. President, we must bring together leaders in the technology world, people who not only know what technology today is doing in invading our privacy rights, but what the future holds, because I am quite certain that every single day this technology is growing more and more sophisticated and more and more intrusive. And sitting down with people who are experts on technology, we have got to have civil libertarians, people who understand what the First Amendment is, what the Fourth Amendment is, what our Bill of Rights is about, what our Constitution is about. And of course, involved in that discussion must be law enforcement and our security experts. And the goal of all of this must be to create legislation which does everything that we can to protect the safety of the American people, but also protects our privacy rights and our constitutional rights. So, Mr. President, uh, with that, uh, I look forward to working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle uh, on that legislation. And with that, I would yield the floor.